Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Poncha, so welcome back to Endless Legend and my Necrophages playthrough with the Guardians expansion. And last time when we left off I explained to you the basics of the expansion and now I need to deal with the mess that I have, that being the Cassandra that are lurking and skulking about and then I need to deal with the enemies encroaching on my territory. Plenty of things to do, plenty of decisions to make. In the science development, I decided to go for the empowerment first, followed by topography, with the intention of grabbing Geomic Labs ASAP. Why? Well, I do need to play a little bit of catch-up in terms of science. No matter what I do, I will be behind the AI that I know of, but I do not want to be too far behind, because otherwise I will not be able to make the conquest that will allow me to gain momentum and remain the mo and re not remain, but rather maintain that's the word i was looking for maintain the moment throughout the game and as you can see the terrain nearby is fairly good for geomic labs there's a lot of towns with just one science each if i can boost that with geomic labs i'll actually have a decent amount of science gain from over here which i'm rather happy about also i figure i might as well warn you i'm recording this video soon after the previous video so if you said anything important or worthwhile in the comments while well, i have probably responded to it in the comments I am obviously unable to respond to you in this video as of yet. So just a little FYI. Anything else I need to do? Well, I'm actually going to do something that might surprise a few of you. I'm going to go ahead and buy out public library. Now why is that? Well, this is also partially the reason why I decided I can afford to do the kind of empowerment into topography build. Instead of going for something more standard like mercenary market, or a sewer system or perhaps upper pit mine although right now i think it's obvious as to why i'm not going for that that's because i have no luxuries in mind but i thought to myself well right now i'm still a bit far away from my hero and while i am gaining a decent amount of dust right now but let's have a look at the dust overlay there isn't much dust around and i'm currently gaining a lot of dust because i have no armies to maintain and upkeep soon enough i will have armies and i will also have a hero that gives me bonus to experience gain with said armies i'll spend quite a bit on that additionally as soon as i start expanding to the south assuming i'll be able to i'm going to have quite a bit of expenditure during the expansion period so i will i am expecting myself to take quite a bit of dust hit as such i am unable to reliably get a new hero early enough even if i do go for this technology that would normally allow me to get heroes instead then i decided to firstly monitor my death status so that i do not reach the economic crisis that i'm currently predicting for myself and then as i said i'm going to follow up with topography to play a bit more of a catch-up game not catch-up catch-up it's a difference fairly delicious difference as well However, uh, and because of this, I have a bit of dust to spare since I do not need to save it for a hero. Uh, and I decided to use it to get the public library ASAP to, you know, get a bit more science a little bit faster. It is going to be useful in a while. Well. The rest of the dust I'll probably save up for the economic crisis. And if I am capable of avoiding it by any chance, then I'll probably use it to, for example, speed the production of borough streets. So there is that plan. Now I'll end the turn and drink a sip of water because. Holy F, my throat is already dying, so give me a sec. Oh. Oh yeah, that, that helped a bit. Alright, Necrodon is ready. The demons have decided to fly away. This is not enough though. I need to kill them and then I need, then I need to find their nest and destroy it as well, obviously. This will give me food and this will additionally secure the starting city for me which is rather important unfortunately i might encounter the orange player in the meantime because i'm fairly certain the demons came from somewhere over here so they probably have a nest right there it's a problem but it's a problem i cannot really do much about now can i move my production my population a little bit more into food production yes indeed i can in all actuality i don't need this second forager right away if i have a hero a forager and a necrodon this should be more than enough to murder any demons that i might encounter so i'll go ahead and use this army against those guys now after this second forager is done what will i want to do next well it's the decision between empire and making another borough street or rather the first borough street or making a settler i'm leaning towards the settler option purely because it is already 10 9 by that time normally i would have a settler at least in the production already and probably already on the field reason why i don't just yet is well fairly simple i'm playing against the necrophages 
And as necrophages in the early game, you need to be extraordinarily cautious and careful so that you're not snapped off easily, which is why you're usually not allowed to expand too quickly. Now, glimpse of a new era. Somebody is already in era 2, as is expected with endless AI. They beat me to it, which is not really a big deal, but this means that we can now compete for the new deeds, which in this case means that there's Warrior's Warrior. Free counter! In... That's just incredibly powerful. It basically means that you get an extra attack. It's insanely good, especially for Necrophagers. The problem is, you need to fight another Empire to get it. Now, this does mean that it is possible to get it before the Endless AI does. It, the Endless AI, yes, it goes into a fight with a lot of armies and whatnot. But it does take some time for the Endless AI to declare war on other AI. So I do have a small window of opportunity where I can get Warrior's Warrior. And I would very much so like to get it. Master of Markets is actually relatively simple-ish to get. AI oftentimes neglects trade routes, whereas players do not, because trade routes are really, really good in early game. So that's nice. It's not a very big bonus, but nevertheless, it's not that hard to get either. So yeah, there's that. Of course, for that, I will need to be in second era myself, so this will delay me a bit. And the Baron of Industry. I would love to have it. Problem is, I don't have the resources for it. And looking around, I don't see the required resources either. There is glass steel in this territory. I will need to conquer it. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. There might be some resources down south, so maybe I could go for Baron Industry. I would really love to, it would help me a lot, but I have my doubts. Usually, if you don't start in a region with either glass steel or titanium, you are unlikely to be able to go for any of those wonders, unfortunately. Anyway, at any rate, it's now time for the Empire plan. I only have one city, so the Empire plan is cheap, but still I can only go for one thing. I'm gonna go for unit cost reduction, because I'll be making a lot of units, including settlers and foragers and necrodones. I need that. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that this is skewed up. Now, I do have an army warrior of Mordor, so let's go ahead and start marrying some bastards, shall we? Let's assign a hero as well. He is wounded, of course, so, I cannot, so he can't take too much damage, but he can tank some, and that's all that matters the way I see it. I could equip him with better equipment, but that unfortunately does cause death, so I will not do anything of the sort. Instead, I'm just gonna brutally murder those demons, and you see, I would say I should be able to kill them without too much of a problem. But, you see, no, I would love to ult while this, but I'm not too sure if AI is... Let's, let's do manual. It's gonna be the first manual of the expansion. I figure we might as well do something of the sort. The, these guys have the first move, they have two movement. Alrighty then, so this guy is going to move over here. That should be easy enough. I'm just gonna move like so. And perhaps assume a defensive position in the tree line should be rather good, if you don't mind me saying so myself. And those guys will be well within my reach on the next turn. Lovely. Lovely indeed. So let's go ahead and do that. My militia has spawned as well, which will not... Oh, wow. How the hell does my forager have enough initiative? Oh, they have the same amount of initiative? That's unexpected. Wow. This is... Well, good to know, I suppose. Still, it doesn't do much for me right now. So it's in fact is a little bit lame because I was hoping for those guys to come in first Except now it turns out I have enough initiative. So in this case, I'm gonna Stand in the style stay in the style and wait for the enemy to come to me now Those guys are going to come over forward a little bit. So I need to be careful You definitely let out this guy everybody else attack this guy now Where might he go come either this style or this style to the left? Now, I don't want my units to stand close to each other because then I'll be lining bolted, but there isn't much planning I can do right now, unfortunately. Let's launch the battle. No, I told you to stay there! <laughs> I should have pressed on the hot position button. I really should have, shouldn't I? Well then, at the very least, I do get the poison off on the very first turn, which I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, so I suppose the poison will start working ASAP. And the militia, well, militia is mostly going to be worthless, but they would do a little bit of extra. That's pathetic even for you, wow. Okay, now on focus, when it matters, I am lower than the enemy in terms of initiative, so they will be able to get nice, lovely chain lines off on me, which is, well, not ideal, obviously. Let's try to surround the enemy to the best of my uh, capabilities, so that at the very least it's not a devastating chain landing for the future. So let's see, yeah, it's not very bad, thankfully it's early game, so the enemy doesn't do 
do a lot of damage with chain lightning and now I'm gonna separate myself so it should be fairly okay and again I do have the disease ability which is going to wreck the enemy and of course Necrodos attack and they matter Necrodos are fairly good at killing things have I not mentioned that perhaps like 20 times already over the course of the last video yeah I think I did regardless yeah Necrodos are made of pure awesome and with a bit of awesome sauce to top so with them I can kill pretty much very reliably anything that the regular camps can spawn at me, unless there's really a lot of units. So my hero has leveled up, I'm gonna give him extra experience, so that my Necrodrones can become more awesome than usually usual. And the Kazanji are right there, of course, right next to the border with the orange player, go figure. Huh? Regardless, I'll need to kill them, murder them, and also then reconstruct the village so I can have extra free population in my city, which is rather useful. I think I have 6 out of 8, yes I do, so that's not quite enough for a meal, more like an appetizer, I suppose. Regardless, can I move my population a little bit? Yeah, I can, but it doesn't do much for me, I suppose. So let's keep it as it is right now, and I suppose I could do something tricky somewhere, but I'm not sure if it's entirely worthwhile. I think I will start walking on... If I start walking on a cellar right now, it will slow down my food production. That is the problem that I'm currently facing. But only for one bit, and then if I move him behind the empowerment, that would work. But on the other hand, I could just make empowerment get the industry that is carried over from the industry abundance on this then. So I think that's what I will do. And the turn, drink a bit more water, if you don't mind. No juice this time. Unfortunately, I didn't put it in the fridge, so yeah. And oh wow, you're attacking again. And dude, AI. Last time I wrecked you, and now you're saying that I have even less of a chance to kill you, even to have a large army? Seriously? Maybe those demons have one more level than last time? Maybe. Regardless, I do not see there being even a chance of the enemy surviving. So yeah, that's matter than brutally once again. And let's see how we do this. I don't have the forest advantage anymore, unfortunately. But I will be able to kite the enemy quite reliably, I would assume. So, they have two movement as last time. So one, two, they can get into a forest, but nowhere else. And they actually cannot go into this town either. So I can make it so that all my units have a very decent amount of morale going into the fight, which should uh, give me a victory. And this time the enemy is moving forward first. So, hopefully... They will stand next to the forest and not inside the forest. That would be absolutely ideal. Now I will use this forager to poison this guy ASAP. And it's fairly likely that he will allow me to attack from within where my from within my city towns, which would be in fact preferable. Necrodons, I don't care how you approach the enemy, just make sure that you do damage him. It, there is a risk, of course, that I might allow them for a chain landing, but frankly it's not a very big deal. And ah. Uh, yeah, this forager is not gonna do anything. That's a, that's unfortunate. Did I tell those necrodons to attack this guy or this guy? I have no idea. I hope I told them to attack this guy so that the disease can start making its way through the enemy's flesh. But now I was relying on those foragers. Unfortunate. I missed anyway, so I suppose it doesn't matter. Alright, then. My units are a little bit too close to each other for, to my liking. However, some things are unavoidable. And I'm not necessarily gonna complain about that. So let's make sure that I'm on the high ground. Although if I'm not on the high ground, I'll be able to attack simultaneously with more units. So let's do something of this sort. Then move like this and continue the offensive. You go ahead and do it like this. And I should be able to wreck the enemy. Although it looks like the enemy actually decided to be evil to me. And move to the towns where I didn't want him to. And oh wow, that was a very weird critical without actually any animation. Not sure how you do that, but oh well, you did. Enemy. Hey, I was the one with high ground over there. I mean, now the enemy has high ground, but previously I had the high ground. Cheaters. Whatever. I am marrying the enemy, obviously, as it was to be expected. My hero is taking a beating, don't get me wrong, but then again, it's my hero. He's got the last stand ability for a reason. He can take a beating. Right now, I'm not planning to go to war with anybody just yet, so it's frankly quite okay if I lose this hero. So let's go ahead and finish madding the enemy. I took some more damage, my hero is dead. Oh no, he will be back. Now this was a little bit hurtful, I gotta admit. And I lost a militia, which wasn't a big deal at all. However, this Kazanji should fall on this turn, and this one, uh, surprisingly, is still alive. How on earth does my militia have disease on it? Oh, it's militia. Militia doesn't actually get disease uh, immunity. Unlike the rest of the Necrophages units. But thankfully, 
Yeah, the enemy just died. My militia took some extra damage. Do we care? The answer is no, we do not. We get more cadavers. So we can now use a stockpile, which I'll gladly use. Actually, will I gladly use it? Let's have a quick look. So I have another forager ready, which is nice. I will gain population growth in this turn anyway. So I think I'm gonna use the stockpile food to jumpstart the new city that I'll create. It will probably be fairly important to do. So in that case, I'll start working on empowerment. Only start working, mind you. Because I... Can I complete it in one turn? Yes, but then I will not grow in a single turn either. Oh well, I suppose I'll start working on empowerment and then stop and make a cellular ASAP because I do want to have this extra population as soon as possible. Now then, I'm gonna go ahead and kill those bastards. And... Oh, for crying out loud! Okay, they have a city right next as well. Well, I hope that this rambler will rumble the city down that would be ideal but somehow i doubt it's gonna happen and you cannot really reinforce this army properly can you i'll move him a little bit far away uh, so that he can assist the fight and then i'll move him back into the city so i don't have to pay for him let's declare the attack marry this guys again now of course my hero has no hp so it's gonna be a little bit more tedious to do but i still should be able to do it if i lose a forager or even a necrodon at this point it's fine it those guys definitely paid for themselves by now. Okay, so same deal as the last time they make it all the way over to here. So it should be fine. Necrodon out over there, like so. Actually, I can even move. Suppose like this. It should be fine. Necrodons have a ton of movement. So let's go ahead and do just that. And I have a reinforcing forager as well, which is nice. Let's have the reinforcing forager focus on the other. Demon, while everybody else is focusing on this particular demon. Start a fight, kill everybody, drink a bit of water. Hmm. I actually took a lot of damage there, I have to admit. About the disease is what is going to kill the enemy, and of course, my hero is also going to wreck the enemy. Now, a single chain lining will be enough to kill my hero, that is, of course, something I'm aware of. But the way I see it, he already dealt his critical damage once. That's honestly all I needed of him, so that's good enough for me. Let's make sure that my militia can actually attack. Now the enemy will get a wonderful chain lining over here. Is this a problem really? Not necessarily, and oh wow, that was stupid. They just critted my hero for no reason with one damage. I'm surprised he survived. He still survived. How is he still alive? Did I just find a bug or is my hero made of pure awesome? I'm gonna assume the latter, even though the first option is probably what is actually happening. Am I missing something that was added? No, I believe not. I haven't seen anything like this at the very least when I was testing. But yeah, it looks like my hero... Oh no, he died this time. Alright. Maybe just maybe the enemy actually had a critical miss and it registered as one damage by some for some reason. I'm not too sure. Either way, my hero comes back. My units level up. The enemy is killed. Wonderful news. I did rather happy by this. So there is that done. Uh, something happened. Ah, that's their greeting, right. I'm not gonna start any negotiation with you whatsoever. Thank you very much. I'm also gonna stay as far away from you as possible. That would be preferable indeed. They also have emeralds, bastard. It's not like emeralds are any use, but it's annoying that they have it and I don't have anything. Oh well. Things like that do happen, I suppose. Let's save a little bit of dust. And I suppose I'm ready to go. Yes, let's go ahead and end this turn. I'll get topography now relatively quickly-ish. Ah, alrighty then, that's fine, they're far away, they're just saying that they like me for no reason. Don't worry, I'll kill you later, anyway, you're far away, so I won't kill you right now, so you, I suppose you do have reasons to like me. Now then, let's continue moving forward, let's reinforce my army with some foragers, and this should be an army capable of killing absolutely everyone without any problems. Ha making it a bit bigger would be nice, and it's something I will do at some point, it's not something I need to rush though. Alrighty then, I cannot in any way, shape or form make the cellar in sooner than two turns, so I might as well make it so that I also use up the population to grow a little bit of backup food, so that when the cellar does come out, I have some food already made. Although I could also ultimately give myself of that now, most... Nah, for science perhaps? Science isn't the worst idea ever. I will need to have the abundance of science, I suppose. But no, I think I'll just walk a little bit more on food. I really don't think it's a bad idea. Although I suppose what I uh, what else I could do is start working on the Kazandri village and see how quickly I can make it if I focus on production right away. I can have it done in three turns. 
which is in fact rather splendid. It will drop once I lose the population, of course, but still I'm content with this idea. Getting Cassandra Village in three turns is rather fun. Fine with me. So there's that done, wisdom, wisdom, blah blah blah, yada yada, nobody cares. And the 10, I now have very decent death income, so I will not starve myself to death economically at the very least. And let's see, I need two more technologies. That's uh, remarkable. I am far behind in terms of vision leader. There is somebody doing actually worse than me, so I feel very, very sorry for that person. Is it a cultist? There is a probability, a high probability of that. Otherwise, AI would not be behind me. And uh, let's see, two more technologies. I will need happiness, that's a uh, given since I'm necrophagous. What is the last technology I will go for? I suppose this will be determined by, by what I find in the next region. So let's go ahead and scout a little bit, shall we? And the best way to scout is to attack and holy f! Oh, oh! Well, I need to grab those regions really quickly. This is contested with broken lot, so it will be hard to grab in time. This is also better, but this one looks like it's uncontested. So if I can grab this one, then I should also be able to grab this one. So I think I'll prioritize getting this region first. Either way, let's get more scanning information, and I suppose. This will, well, this will reveal me a little bit, but I think I'm gonna move like so. Nidia! Oh, there are the guys I need to kill as well! That's that's splendid. Lovely. Alright, let's kill those guys. Orcs should not be a problem. Looks like Autobado is also gonna hand me the victory, so let's go ahead and take it. Easy peasy. Honestly, I should have probably taken even more damage than I have, but then again, those were Orcs. I have fast flying units. It's ex explainable as to why it went as well as it did. Nidia, not a problem. They are extremely weak units. Oh, Though they have been slightly buffed, but seriously, they are still rather weak. Circular attack is the only thing that they can catch you off guard. They're really good at messing around with careless Wild Walkers players, but other than that, I don't value them a great deal. So it should be more or less fine. And how many cadavers do they have now? I could have a bit more, alright, didn't. Cellar is down over there, and there is the central for minor lot. There are minor. <sighs> We've been through this, haven't we? I'm just not gonna pronounce its name ever again. How about that? I think it's a good idea. I like this idea at the very least. Alrighty then. After the Kazanji is done, what else will I want to have? Probably another seller ASAP, although that remains to be determined. So let's move this uh, population into industry production to make sure that I am capable of making Kazanji as soon as this thing is done. Although I could also theoretically move some of those guys into science now. In fact, I know for a fact I will need to have the extra industry, looks like. So, let's do it this way. End the tent. So far, so far, things are looking rather okay. I do hope that the broker lots will... Oh, hi there. Not be able to grab this region, because I really do love it. So, what is happening? Well, people are grabbing legendary deeds. First of all, it's somebody... The broken lots, of course. Activated three luxury boosters. And they have 150 wine. Well, I suppose... I mean... They are decadent, so they're gonna need this wine. I guess. Righty then. You have your wine, you bastards. Now this is gonna be a pain for me to kill them. What is the other thing that I failed? It's... Ah, kill people. That's... Who got it? Unknown Empire. Alright, so Unknown Empire has 15% extra initiative. Uh, let's put it this way. If they have a lot of ranged units, this is a problem. If not, this is acceptable and something I can deal with. Bit annoying, nothing more than that. Unless it's other mages, in which case it's absolutely horrible. Also, last time I did mention that the Bokolos are the ultimate rushers. Well, they are great rushers, but obviously the other mages are the ultimate rushers. So this is something to keep in mind. It could be worse. I could have been facing other mages right now. Alrighty then. I'm gonna auto battle you. You don't deserve my attention, in all honesty. Good for this to do damage rather than my hero on Necrodon, which is something I'm rather happy about. Exactly as this was supposed to be. Let's go ahead and firstly explore the ruins, I suppose, because I might find something valuable in there. Five glass steel, not extremely useful, but something I'm not gonna complain too much about anyway. Boss have been discovered, alright, good. Let's kill this, was I supposed to kill this village? Well, it's not like I can do anything else, so I suppose I will. I was supposed to pacify it, which means kill it. So let's go ahead and do just that. Again, no losses, my hero has taken some damage, but I have a new food booster, which is nice. And I believe this should have uh, should have been enough. No, wait, that's a different region. Oh, for crying out loud! 
I knew I was supposed to go over there. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, well, at least this region is pacified. It also means that there's a lot of media villagers nearby. So if I wanted to have a lot of initiative, I could go ahead and assimilate the media. As it stands, this is seriously a bad idea. So no, thank you very much, but no. Alrighty then. So there's all of this done. Now, this region is actually very small. But purely because of this amazing lineup of wonders, it's really amazing. So I'm gonna obviously grab it and also additionally look at the amount of food. Even if I settled here, which will obviously lower the amount of food I can get here, it's still gonna be rather good. It's gonna be a bit tough to get a good line, but if I make a line like this away, it should be more or less okay. Question is, where do I start? I can start over there, so I have extra happiness, which is the option I'm leaning forward to, you know, honestly. But then again, if I start over here, I'm pretty sure this will give me the most base Fitzy value out of uh, all of those tiles available. So it's either a lot of Fitzy or Hexa Happiness. I'll need to decide later, I suppose. Actually, not later, but right now, because I have a seller ready. Either way, though, he cannot make his way to Desire Tiles. So I suppose I still have one extra turn to decide. Alrighty, then Kazanji on its way. What do we want next? Well, another seller, in all honesty. I'm doing a fine job clearing the enemy encampments, so I can continue expanding. After I'm done with the cellar, I'll probably need to make a bit more of an army. But right now I can probably risk making one more cellar. It is, again, a bit of a risk, as I mentioned, but it's something I can do. Also, how fast can I make it? Three tens is, a, is the soonest possibility. I can also grow in three tens. I do have two food boosters, so I can activate one of them to have a little bit more food growth and as you can see I'll now grow in a single turn which is rather splendid so I can use this extra population I have now in order to boost my sands production a little bit which is rather important. I can also move it to have a bit more of influence production I suppose and I'm not really boosting the sewer system production so I suppose influence is gonna be more important for me right now so let's go ahead and try to grab it a little bit so there's that done, I think I'm ready with the stand. Yep, it looks like I am. Winter might start in seven, or now six stands. Just something to be aware of. And even more spiral rock peels, wow. But this is actually a bad location for a city right here. There's Black F and Hidden Springs. So, nice area for the future expansion, perhaps. Broccolos actually have a very bad luck, because if those are the two regions, they are, these are cold regions with barely any dust, they will be starved very easily. I should be able to kill them after I get to mid game point. Not yet, mind you, they still have a fearsome foe and opponent, but I should be have all the text to kill them rather quickly and then take all the research, which is again very, very valuable and important. Okay, I can't get to this uh, tile in a single turn, so let's have a quick look, shall we? This tile gives me. Hey, there we go. It gives me 6, 6, 3, 7, and 10, as opposed to this tile, which gives me. Oh wow, no production! Oh! Okay then, I didn't notice that actually. Well, as much as I like this style, I need to have production. Like, this is a must. Because I can give myself food from defeated enemies. I cannot give myself production this way. And there's also this style, I suppose. But now it's not that amazing. 5-5, five, 7-5. Five, five. Uh, and come on, show me the goods. Yeah, yeah, this is certainly much better. And it gives me happiness, which is, again, invaluable. So. I suppose I will settle down here. Do I have any luxuries that I missed? No, I do not, so that is good to know. Is there any benefit to waiting? Well, no. Broccolos might come in and any second to grab this territory, so I'll go ahead and settle ASAP. And I can now assimilate the Nidia. I would rather not, however. Instead, I'll focus on growing my economy as much as possible and also growing the city. So let's go ahead and activate the stockpile so I can get instant growth in there. Uh, so instead of getting a population 5 tens, I should get one in a single ten. As for my capital, it's working just fine. Can I move some population away? I, in fact, can. How much exactly? One point is, well, that's good enough, I suppose. And I will gain a very nice amount of influence as a result. And then I want to queue up. Well, I do need to have at least one more Necrodon, because you never know what might happen. You need to have a security Necrodon, in my opinion. Although, by that time... I'll actually have... No, I will not be in era 2 yet. I could wait. I'll, I'll make a security forager. Because I want to upgrade my necrodons before I start making more necrodons. That's the idea. I could also make geomic labs, which is something I will make at some point. In fact, I could buy it out. But I think it's a better idea to buy out something for this city's growth. For example, this mill foundry. 
it is indeed a good idea and I'm gonna go for just that so that this city grows nice and fast because again I need to play catch-up game when you're playing as Necrophages for the first several times all you're gonna do is play catch-up play catch -up, click play catch up and I am repeating myself over and over about this again because this is very important to, for you to remember don't try to be aggressive I mean be prepared for aggression but if you are trying to be aggressive overly aggressive you're gonna be punished for this I'm already I'm already you know almost crossing the boundaries because in all honesty and go away for a second I should have a bigger military than I do right now if those guys decide to attack me right now I'm almost defenseless as soon as the cellar is done I need to seriously pump out more military Necrodons in particular will be extremely important but a random event has actually happened at 1060 this time all right then so let's look at things one after another Sewer system done. I will decide next research after I see what else has happened. Grow population. Yep, that's to be expected. Production and please note that will be a common frontier. You are encroaching on sovereign territory. All right, how much do they like me? Uh, well, they have no strong opinions against our former, but I need to be aware of them. New quest added: a plague of sewer. Oh, right then. Well done. Outbreaks of extreme violence are flaring up and down on land. Orica disease inquis inquisition squarely plays the blame with undisciplined armies infected with rabies like pestilence. Fortunately, the origin of the contagion is uh, believed to be known. Basically, vampire zombie likes everywhere. So, yeah. Right now, uh, minor factions are gonna be extraordinarily aggressive. Extraordinarily strong. In order to stop that, you need to find uh, the Erekus village in Somme Eye. It's, uh, it's not even a region I have access to, so I have to rely on other place to do it. This is one of the so-called collaborate, there we go. Plus 40 damage on hostile manufacturing units on units. This is something, uh, one of the so-called collaborative quests. As you can see, all the players, well you cannot see it, but trust me, every single player got this quest at the same time. If you want this quest to be resolved, what well, we have to deal with? You can do it yourself, you can do it with collaboration with friends, you can hope that somebody else does it for you, it depends. I, thankfully, don't have to worry about it too much. Yes, it will be annoying when finding the orcas, orcas, orcs over here, however, it's not a hugely big issue for me, as I have already killed a lot of minor factions. In fact, it is kind of good for me, because it's the enemy factions that I believe will have a bit more of a problem with this. So I'm rather okay with that. Okay, then. Let's uh, have a look. I don't want to declare an attack on this village just yet. I need to find the roving orcs. Yeah, there's a lot of them, as expected, and kill them. Before I do that, I might as well go ahead and grab those ruins and also scuttle around a little bit, I suppose. So the, uh, this looks like a very uncontested territory. That's nice. There's, there are some spices in here as well. Spices, again, extraordinarily valuable for the necrophages. Something that you will love a lot and you will probably need to use a lot. If you can have access to them, grab them. So there is that then. Uh, and nothing too much imp too important in my capital research-wise. I don't believe I need to do anything in relation to the quest that was just added and the random event. So we are fine with that. What do I need? Well, I will need access to spices in the future. Do I have access to riv rivers? No, I do not. So river technology is kind of worthless. Ruins is not worthless, but it's not worthwhile either. I'm just gonna go for open pit mine. Thank you very much. So with that done, I'm gonna end my video in fact, because it's been long enough if you don't mind me saying so. I'll just make sure that the city doesn't starve first. Thank you very much. So let's see. I would love to get six thirty to one ten. So I'll make it so, and then I'll fix the foot production afterwards. And here, well, everything is as it's supposed to be. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Punch, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.